The transition from late winter to early spring is one of my favorite times of the year in New England. It's maple sugar season. Warm sunny days coupled with below freezing nights mean it's time to tap the trees and boil the sap into syrup. I'll tap 24 trees this year, which will make more than enough syrup for all of my family's sugar supply for the year. Of course, since my old scrap belt evaporator succumbed to the forces of rust, it's time that I got around to building a new one out of whatever bits of metal I have on hand. I've still got my old pan, so I'll start with a frame for that. I've got a lot of this 1 8 inch plate that I salvaged out of the Jeep. This thing should be pretty beefy. The bottom panel is just a rectangle the same size as the frame on the top. I'm going to line the whole thing with fire brick so it makes sense to design it around the bricks. Going four high should be good. The back panel's the most complex. It has an inlet for a blower and is also going to get the chimney on it. For the side panels, I ran out of rusty junk and had to resort to using less crusty stock. For the front, I opted to build a frame to help hold the fire brick in and protect it while loading wood. Well, the front of this thing came out looking like it was welded by a 10-year-old who's never welded before. Because it was. 
you got to start somewhere, and I don't know, he did a decent job in a few spots. I mean, a lot of my welds are pretty ugly too, but that's what grinders are for. For the door, I'm using some heavier plate, and I decided to try using some anchor lube while cutting it. I've actually never used anchor lube on the bandsaw before, and I've got to say it made cutting this much easier, and the color matches my bandsaw remarkably well. Once this thing has the fire bricks in it, it's going to be really heavy, so I think some wheels are in order. I'm only putting one leg on the back. That'll make it easier to get this thing level when it's sitting in my driveway. And now we see the reason why I welded all this from the outside. If I did it on the inside, I would have to chamfer all of these fire bricks to fit around the welds. My crappy little tile saw does a good job with these fire bricks. And then I used some furnace cement to hold in the vertical ones. The latch on here is intentionally short, and I'm just using a little scrap of square tube as a fall-away handle. That way the handle doesn't get too hot. Then it's just a process of tending the fire and keeping enough sap in the pan that it doesn't burn, but not so much that it boils over. It usually takes about 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. Uh, if you want that in metric, it's 40 liters of sap to make one liter of syrup. So the process always seems to go late into the night. I do the last bit of boiling on the stove top, and once the hydrometer floats at the little red line, it's maple syrup. Well, my gasket made it through one day of boiling before it fell off. I've also got some pinholes along the side here that I want to weld up. You know, making something like this is definitely an iterative process. See what works and adapt. I tried a more robust gasket adhesive and a thicker gasket, and, and this seemed to do the trick. I've also got a problem on the back of the pan here, where it's against the chimney. It's kind of burning on there. I think if I can hold this back a little bit, it'll help. I've been running this for about two hours now, and the heat shield seems to be doing a pretty good job. Kind of playing around with my thermal camera with this. Topdon sent me this thermal camera a few months back. It's their TC005. 
I found it really handy to have around the shop. Works really well for visualizing hot spots on things like this. And you can see it's still a little bit hotter right back there by the end. About 200 and, eh, call it 230, 240. Maybe a little hotter than I'd like, but not too bad. The rest of the stack is pushing 900 degrees in some spots. The main body has a few hot spots. The door is obviously a good bit hotter than the rest of it since there's no insulation on it, but that new gasket seems to be working pretty well. This camera feels really well made, and I actually haven't even charged it since the initial charge when I got it, so the battery life is really impressive. The resolution on the screen is good for what I use it for in the shop, but if I've got one complaint about it, it's that the resolution and workflow of actually recording video with it isn't very good, which is why I tend to just record the screen with another camera. It's fun to see the heat coming out of the stack here. Now that I'm happy with this, the last thing I did was a quick and dirty rattle can paint job on it. Well, there you go. Made some syrup, making some more syrup. I'm going to keep at this and say thanks for watching.